Hello everyone. So <clears throat> in this video, uh, we will be discussing about project evaluation and review technique. I was uh, asked by some of my students to make a video on how to construct a network diagram, uh, how to find out a critical path, etc. So then I thought like, uh, let me make a video on project evaluation and review technique also. Uh, so that it will cover all those whatever they asked further uh, it will also address about how do you find the probability uh, if <coughs> the number of uh, sorry if the duration is specified or to find out the duration if the probability is specified so that is actually the motivation for me to make this video now let us go into the topic it's a project evaluation and review technique and we will be addressing about this topic with a numerical example, right? Fine. Yes. So uh, it's a data given in the question. Consider the data of a project summarized in the following table wherein certain activities are given and its predecessors are given. First of all, let us understand what do you mean by this predecessors. Predecessors is nothing but the preceding activities. For example, activity A, B, C, all these three activities need not have any preceding activity. That is why it is mentioned as dash in that. Whereas if I have to start activity D or E or F, I need to ensure that the activity A is already completed, then only I can start these activities. Similarly, if you come to this G, activity G, that can be started only after completion of activities both B as well as C. Similarly, I can start this activity J only after completion of activities E and G. Now, they didn't give you directly the duration in this problem, they instead they gave you what is called as A, M and B. Here, A is called the optimistic time. Optimistic time. In some textbooks, they also use the notation T suffix O and this M is nothing but the most likely time. Most likely time. And uh, it is also denoted by T suffix M and then uh, B. B is our pessimistic time. Most of the projects, uh, the duration of a particular activity uh, is uncertain in the sense it is probabilistic, it is not deterministic. So for that reason, this data is collected after discussion with the project team means what will be the least possible time, which is considered to be an optimistic time when things are going as per plan, everything goes extremely well, then what will be the uh, time taken that is considered to be the optimistic time. And uh, similarly, the opposite of that is the pessimistic time. If uh, Nothing goes as per plan and if it takes maximum time, what can be the maximum time it can take? Means for an activity to take. That is considered to be the pessimistic time. And the most likely time is the normal time what is going to be taken. Means uh, taking, taking into consideration that whatever is normal for each activity, how much is the time? That is the most likely time. So this pessimistic time is also denoted by T suffix P. Now, uh, generally, uh, the activity durations, activity durations are said to follow or said to follow beta probability distribution. Beta probability distribution. And for uh, our convenience to check the probabilities and all in case if the probability is asked yes probability we have to find 
in case if the probability is asked for our convenience what we do is we will convert this beta distribution uh, approximate to a standard normal distribution so that we can verify the standard normal tables to find out the probability uh, for a given uh, actual duration or to find out the uh, what is the actual duration required if a probability is already given for both the things we will be verifying the tables okay now let us proceed with the question so the activities are given predecessors are given duration are given in terms of optimistic most likely and pessimistic what are the questions construct the project network that is the first question then expected duration and variance of each activity uh, for each activity a b c d up to j we have to find out the expected duration as well as variance expected duration is nothing but the mean duration right uh, so we will be calculating those then to find the critical path and the expected project completion time we will be doing that also and then what is the probability of completing the project on or before 35 weeks right and then if the probability of completing the project is 0 0.84 find the expected project completion time. So what we will do in this particular uh, video is that we will only address about the first one, that is question A, we will do it in this particular video. Subsequent videos, we will address the other questions so that uh, the videos length of the duration also will be shorter for you to watch. So to start with, we need to construct the project network. Let us construct the project network. Whenever we start with a, any project network, we will start with what is called as a node, which is looking like a circle and giving a number one. Now, if we look into this uh, table, we may notice that activity A, B, C, all these activities do not need any preceding activity. So all those activities can start from this first node. So I will start with an arrow and a circle will be done. Similarly here, I will put a circle. From here, I will put another circle. So uh, each circle represents a node and each arrow represents an activity. So we have been given activities A, B, C. So let us mark those A, B and C means all these are starting from the first node in the sense uh, it doesn't need any preceding activity. Preceding activity is not there before this A, before this B, before this C. Right. Then proceeding further, activity D can start after completion of activity A means at this node I can start activity D. So let me give a number there as 2. Okay, then before I draw this D, I verify whether this D is merging with any other activity in the predecessors column. Means D is getting clubbed with any other activity. No, it is appearing alone only. So I can straight away draw like this. Since it is not getting clubbed with any other activity, this I will draw and call that as D activity. Okay, so what all we have done? We have done A, we have done B, we have done C, we have done D. Okay, then activity E can start after completion of activity A. Then I check whether activity E is getting merged with any other activity or not. Is getting merged with any other activity or not. I find E is getting merged with activity G. But so far we haven't drawn G. So what I can do, I will simply draw a straight line because the G is yet to be drawn. I'll call this as activity E. So what all we have done now? E is done. Okay. Then activity F. Activity F, does it have any preceding activity? Sorry, uh, is it getting merged with any other activity? I notice that F is not at all appearing in the predecessors list. It means that F is going to meet the last node. So what I will do, I will draw a line like this 
and uh, extend this considering that it is going to the last node this i will call it as activity f okay then next activity what i need to draw is activity g i notice that activity g can start only after completion of activity b and activity c but uh, before drawing g i also see whether g is getting merged with anything yes it is getting merged with e and g so i should remember that when i draw g i should ensure that that g should meet that g activity should meet the uh, end node of that activity e also because it is getting merged with e and if i have to draw g from where i have to start i have to start wherever this b and c are getting merged whereas if you look into b is going like this c is going like this it is not getting merged so i need to bring in a dummy activity like this and then now i can say this both b b is going like this and then getting ended here c is also getting ended here now i can say both b and c are getting ended at this node now let me give some numbers here this i will call it as 3 this i will call it as 4 right that means from 4 i can start that activity g now i notice that i already noticed that g is getting merged with activity e so when i draw g i should ensure that it meets or merges with uh, e it should merge with e now if you look into there is a problem in this diagram this is going like this but if i draw this i should actually ensure that it meets this e so what i will do i will just interchange this uh, activities e and f so that it will become convenient for us to do it in the sense what i will do is i will wrap this now i will put f in the middle let it go to the end node this is what i interchanged f now then i will bring in e this is our e now from this node 4 i can start that activity g so let me put a tick here node uh, 4 i should start because why node 4 because at node 4 both b and c are getting ended and i will ensure that that activity reaches this end node of e also this is our g okay i had put some commas here if you notice everywhere i should put a comma here there i have to mention that duration which we will do it later because we don't have a expected duration calculated we are supposed to calculate the expected duration for each activity then we will put that duration over there not now right okay what is the next activity to be drawn activity h should be drawn that can be drawn after completion of activity c then i check whether h is getting merged with any other activity i notice that in this predecessors h itself is not appearing that means h has to go to the last node and i can start h on completion of activity c where c is getting completed we may not see is getting completed at node 4 from there i should start this h and i should ensure that h goes to the last node so from here what i will do i will ensure that it goes to the last node This is the last node we identified that time. I will put like that. What is that? What we have drawn now is H activity H. Let me write H here. Put a comma. Let me just drop this and rewrite this. Let me write that as G here and put a comma. There. Okay. We have drawn till h what else to be drawn activity i can be started after completion of activity d we may note d is getting completed at this node 
from there i can start activity i then i have to check whether before drawing i i have to check whether i is getting merged with any other activity in the predecessors list i notice that in predecessors list i itself is not appearing i itself is missing that means i also has to go to the last node let me put a tick first for i i need to start i from activity d and that i has to go to the last node so that means from here let me draw ensuring that that goes to the last node like this okay let me put a arrow there this is what this is our i put a comma and keep it right now activity j that can be started after completion of activity e and g before drawing j i again check whether j is getting merged with any other activity or not in the predecessors column in the predecessors column i notice that i sorry j itself is not appearing that means j also goes to the last node where i have to start j on completion of e and g where g e and g are getting completed here it is at this node it is getting completed so from there i have to start this j let me start that like this i can complete j that is our j let me put a arrow mark there call this as j come on now uh, based on the sorry by whichever nodes i have not number let me number first so let me call this as 5 this as 6 and this as 7 so we may notice that this particular network has got totally seven nodes 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 nodes let us recheck whether our network whatever we have drawn is it satisfying what is called as a precedence relationship precedence relationship means whatever predecessors conditions are given here whether it is getting satisfied or not activity a b c do not have any preceding activity yes it has not got any preceding activity any activity which do not have a preceding activity should start from the first node yes all those things are starting from the first node right we have checked that then activity d can start after completion of activity a activity d is starting from node 2 node 2 is the end node for activity a yes it is starting from there so it is satisfying okay activity e can start on completion of activity a let me check that activity e can start on completion of activity a activity a is ending at node 2 from node 2 e is starting okay it is matching activity g can start on completion of activity b and c where b and c are getting completed b and c sorry b and c both are getting completed at node 4 from node 4 i can start activity g yes it is starting from node 4 only this g yes it is matching activity h can start on completion of activity c activity c is getting completed at node 4 from there i can start activity h yes from node 4 h is starting okay activity i can start after completion of activity d activity d is getting completed at node 4 from there i have started activity i yes it is matching activity j can start on completion of e and g yes we noticed e and g both are getting completed at node 6 from node 6 i have started activity j fine and now next to checking is whichever activities is not appearing in the predecessors column those activities should go to the end node is it so a b c d e e f f should go to the end node yes f is going to the end node 7 okay then uh, f uh, then g g is here only then uh, h h should go to the end node yes h is going to the end node then i also should go to the end node yes i is going to the end node then uh, j should go to the end node yes j is also going to the end node so we can say that yes our our network diagram is perfectly drawn right so with this uh, we will uh, end with end this particular video subsequent questions we will address that in our uh, future videos thank you all take care